Good evening, and thank you so much for coming out on this lovely, beautiful Sunday afternoon to come into a dark movie theater. Uh, my, th my name is uh, Colin Geddes, and I'm one of the programmers here at uh, TFI, the Midnight Madness program, the Vanguard program. And um, I've been really lucky over the last couple of months to uh, become friends with the visitor in our city. And um, as we got to know each other, I'm like, wait a minute. There's a movie theater I know which has got five screens, and we might be able to show one of your films. Would he be interested? And of course, luckily, he uh, he was he was keen to uh, to do this. Um, Roger Avery is here in town, uh, working on a uh, on a TV show, but uh, we were able to pull him away to present his underrated, probably potentially cult classic film, The Rules of Attraction, a masterpiece. And we have him here tonight. I'd like to introduce you to director, producer, screenwriter, Roger Avery. Thank you very much. And really, thanks, Colin and Tiff, and everybody for showing this on film again, which is, like, for me, a, a great joy and, and a special, a special treat to me because tonight my daughter is here who's never seen the movies. I'm both I'm like uh, kind of embarrassed and excited at the same time, but I kind of held off and kept saying, no, no, this is not a film for you, like when she was five. <laughs> it's like, no, you shouldn't see this film, you shouldn't see this film, and uh, you know, I kept waiting and waiting and waiting, and then finally got to the point where it was like, you know what, I'd like you to see this movie in a theater with an audience, and so uh, I, I really, uh, this is very going to be a very special screening for me. Let me just ask really quickly, who here has read the book, The Rules of Attraction? Okay, so a, a good amount of people. Anybody who's read the book knows that it's kind of like a, a nonlinear um, uh, stream of consciousness uh, novel about kids in college. And I read the book when I was in college, and I was struck by how similar it was to everything that I was seeing and that uh, everything I was watching around me. And so. I, uh, I'd be reading a couple of pages, and then I would look up, and I would see the events that had just happened in the book unfold before me. And so that when I adapted the, uh, the material, I decided what I would do is, rather than do an absolute literary adaptation of the book, an exact adaptation of it, that I would kind of try to fold in much of the events of my own life that I had experienced. Um, <laughs> one thing about doing adaptations, and who here knows who John Milius is? And he, he's, uh, John Milius is, uh, yeah, he's like a, a very brilliant filmmaker, but he's like the gun guy in Hollywood. He's the guy you go to, to uh, you know, when you want to make a war film and you need you know, sort of historical advice. He's a writer-director and uh, he's an absolute genius and knows everything about guns. And so I was working on a project with him once and he told me a story about um, one day the phone rang and he picked it up and it's Stanley Kubrick calling him up. And uh, Kubrick said, listen, I understand you're the gun guy, and I'd like some advice from you. I'm looking to buy a handgun. I'd like to have the best handgun that was ever manufactured. Uh, you know, I I'm looking for a, you know, the best thing. And Amelia said, well, that would be a, and I can't remember what it was, a Colt 45 Special manufactured between you know, 42 and 44. Very difficult to find. And Kubrick said, well, that's exactly what I'd like. I'd like one of those. And my one requirement is that it must have never been fired. And Milia said, well, that's going to be a tough one. And you know, he hung up the phone. And he went looking for the gun. And a couple months later, they found such a, a gun in, uh, in Texas. A collector in Texas had one. And so uh, it wasn't cheap. And the, the gun eventually went to England. And money came from England to this guy in Texas. And you know, a couple more months go by. And John Milius is on the phone with uh, Kubrick again. He says, how do you like the gun? Kubrick says, oh my god, I love it. I love it. I love this gun. <laughs> I shaved a quarter of a millimeter off of the top uh, barrel and swapped out that hammer for titanium. I realigned the bead. I took off the uh, mother of pearl handles and put on uh, mahogany. I switched this out. I swapped, th swapped that out. And Milius is mortified. He's like, oh my god, what have you done? You've, you've ruined it. And Kubrick says, no, I made it better. <laughs> and I always took that as uh, an analogy of how one should approach adapting material. You have to be willing to completely disassemble it and then recreate it into something new. Because, well, 
film is a different kind of medium than uh, you know than than books, and and so that when I approached adapting this film, that was exactly the uh, um, the path that I took was to uh, um, to completely disassemble the book and to completely recreate it into something that was totally new because. As anybody who's read the book knows, you could easily make a thousand different movies out of that book. So anyhow, I'm very, very uh, excited to have uh, to have you all here, and I'm really appreciative because I, I do know it's a lovely day outside. And so thank you for coming and hiding in the dark with us to see this film. So <laughs> so enjoy. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll see you guys afterwards for a little Q&A.